Hi, I'm Alex Alguacil. I'm a concert pianist and piano professor at Conservatory of Liceo in Barcelona. And today I want to talk to you about Manuel de Falla and his Fantasia Bética, one of his most important compositions and one of the most important in the Spanish piano repertoire. I hope this video will help you enjoy and get a better understanding of this magnificent work. This is a three-part presentation. First, I'd like to talk about the Spanish harmonies and how the Spanish music is based on a very commonly used group of chords dissonances and cadences. Then I will locate in the score some examples so we get more familiar with this language. Second, I'd like to talk about the instruments that Falla wants to transfer to the piano, like the guitar, the voice, percussion instruments, and even some dancers. And third, I'd like to offer some performance suggestions and talk about the fire, the fire element in the music of Manuel de Falla, and especially in Fantasia Bética. The fire to help create a poetic image, to create some momentum for the performance, and get a more powerful interpretation. Fantasia Bética ranks as one of the major pieces in the Spanish piano literature, along with Iberia by Albéniz or Goyescas by Granados. Although it's true that Fantasia Bética's length is much inferior than those, the depth of the composition, the dimension and the scope of the piece, along with an original piano language, places it as one of the major ones. Falla also wrote a number of piano pieces and transcriptions, and also a beautiful flamenco symphonic poem for piano and orchestra called Nights in the Gardens of Spain, but Fantasia Bética remains his most complicated, extensive solo piano piece. So Fantasia Bética was composed in 1919. This is music composed in the 20th century, but makes reference to a period of time many centuries ago. Baetica was the name that the Roman Empire gave to what is known today as Andalusia, the southern part of Spain. Although Falla didn't want to really place it so accurately in time, but rather to celebrate the flamenco spirit. Nonetheless, in Fantasia Bética we will certainly evoke the flamenco spirit, but we will get other influences and traits from other cultures, such as the Moorish or the Gypsy cultures. Not only their music, but also their art. Listening to Fantasia Bética will get inspiration from those ancient period of times. And more than that, Fantasia Bética tries to connect to the very origins of the flamenco music, the ancient roots of the flamenco music, and Falla found in Cante Hondo, the deep song, its purest manifestation. Because of that, in Fantasia Bética we won't hear a beautifully harmonized melodies like Albéniz does in Iberia, nor the romantic language of Granados, but rather a more primitive and direct music combined with an avant-garde piano language, aggressive in character and pianistically barbarian in sound, like some of the pieces by Bela Bartók. Because of that, some audiences have had a difficult time to really assimilate the character and the scope of the piece. The purposely primitive way of writing, the aggressive character, the harsh sounds, and sometimes the lack of a clear and discernible melody that the listener can hold on to has made it really hard for audiences inside and outside of Spain to really embrace and comprehend the dimension of the piece. Even Arthur Rubinstein, who commissioned the work and was the dedicatee, had some problems with the music. He found the composition austere, he said that the ending was badly written for the pianos, maybe that there were too many glissandos. When he commissioned the piece, he was expecting something like a fire dance, another piece that he performed and became very popular. But he thought that Fantasia Bética was an enlarged version of the fire dance, but lacking the impact of its model. So after he premiered the piece in New York in 1920, apparently he played it a few other times and finally dropped it from his repertoire, never played again. But I believe Falla was very aware of what he was writing, especially when he was searching a sound at the piano that could match the character to express the pain and the suffering that is behind the spirit of this music. So let's explore some aspects of Fantasia Bética and Spanish music at the piano. In Spanish music, we often hear a very typical cadence, a very typical group of four chords, which sometimes it's called Spanish cadence. Manuel de Falla and Spanish composers, they use this cadence all the time, and they use it in many different ways. Using the four chords, sometimes they emphasize only two chords of the progression, they use it with different rhythmic patterns, they use it with the Frisian scale that goes with it, and also they extract notes out of this cadence to create motifs and melodies, ornamenting them and creating variations out of them. 
So let's see now how the Spanish Cadence is built up from scratch and how Manuel de Falla makes it grow in sound using the full extent of the keyboard and how he uses it in Fantasia Bética and some of his other compositions. The chord progression is this one. These are just plain triad chords in root position. We can play them like this too, inverted. And we can add some dissonances to make it sound more colorful and more Spanish. And of course we can play them like an arpeggio, trying to imitate the sound of the guitar. So Falla and Spanish composers use this cadence all the time. And for example, we can play around, improvise with it. Let's play it like octaves up and down. And this is actually what Falla does in Fantasia Bética. Sometimes he changes the form of this cadence to reaffirm it more. Another aspect is to put emphasis on only two chords of this progression. Like Falla does in another one of his pieces. And Falla uses this in Fantasia Bética, transforming it into a little motifs that bring up these two chords. Sometimes these two chords will appear in different ways and different parents, for example, combining it with the Frisian scale like Falla does in the Neighbors Dance. And Falla will bring this to another extreme by playing these two chords, but he will transform it into a glissando, something that has become a trademark of this piece. So instead of this, will do these are just a few examples there are actually many different ways in which to play this cadence for now let's see how instead of playing the chords we can play the main notes of the harmonies we can just play the important notes So with these two note dissonance, Falla will create many different melodies, as we will see. But first, let's hear a passage where Falla uses extensively this dissonance. So just like this, we can also have melodies that come out of these two notes, like... And Falla does actually this in Fantasia Bética. He also alters a little bit the cadence. And he places it only for the left hand making it sound very aggressive, making a very harsh sound since the thumb is the one that has to make the sound. And he combines this with the cadence that we've seen before. So the same way we can extract two notes from the chords before, we can also extract notes out of the Spanish cadence. So we can get the main notes and make a melody out of it, like this. And we can actually play these notes with the chords. And 
we can ornament it going up and down. This is actually Falla does in another of his pieces. And this four note motif actually is a trademark that many composers have used, even French composers like Debussy or Ravel. Ravel uses it actually in his Spanish Rhapsody for orchestra in his first movement, the Prelude to the Night. So let's see now how this motif appears in Fantasia Betica. For example, if we invert this motif, instead of notes going down, we place the notes going up. We have another motif accompanied by a guitar. Later, this will get transformed into more aggressive character and sound like this. But these four notes can also be played cantabile in a more romantic way, like Falla does here. also in an ornamented version that he will do in the intermezzo, the slow part of the piece. He does something beautiful. He takes this four note motif and harmonizes it. And then he creates a nice melody going up and down like this. He uses it transported to other keys. By the way, later this two note motif that we were talking about before will show again here in the form of a bell. But this will be something I will discuss later in the third part when I talk about the fire element. These were some examples of this Spanish cadence and how Manuel de Falla uses it in some of his works and Fantasia Bética and how he can extract melodies and motifs out of it. In the next part I will talk about how these motifs and harmonies represent different instruments from the flamenco ensemble group. I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, I encourage you to listen to the piece and in case you want to check it out, you can listen to my own live performance of the piece.